Hey there, I recently watched this video by Play With Versifer where they made a Vampire Survivors clone in only 10 lines of code. Game dev is a lot of creative illusions, elegant hacks, and temporary solutions, but this, this took that all to a whole new level. And you saw the thumbnail, I was able to do it in nine using my ultimate line saving hack. But more on that later. My current project is actually called Chess Survivors. It's combining vampire survivors with chess. You can actually go play the demo right now over on Steam and it's a surprisingly fun and unique take on the genre. So for this challenge, I'll be remaking Chess Survivors in as few lines of code as possible. Right now, Chess Survivors has thousands of lines of code spanning a huge list of features. It's got grid-based movement, quick turn timers, 14 distinct weapons, it ton of upgrades, game-breaking relics, chest-based enemies, XP gems, a level-up system with random loot, procedural wall generation, piles of spaghetti code, unique characters, dynamic sound design, menus, and so much more. I'm starting to think we might have to cut a little bit of that scope. Before we dive in, let's lay down the ground rules, which will be the same ones that play with first for used. One, you can use an engine, and for me, that'll also be the Godot engine, since I also love Godot. And two, no semicolon concatenated lines, which I'm fine with because I've lost way too many hours back in my Java days for getting those stupid little semicolons. Alrighty, now let's get to the dirty work and kill some of my darlings. Let's start with the easy ones. No menus, they're just unnecessary and frankly, boring. We'll also only have one character, and it sucks, but let's also cut out the upgrades and the level up system, which means we can also kill off the gems. I know, I know, XP gems are what makes this fun, but again, we only have nine lines of code, so let's also cut relics. This is actually kind of fun, and I think by definition, with only nine lines of code, we physically can't create spaghetti code. What a bonus! This still feels like too much, so let's nerf some of these features. Let's make one weapon, one chess enemies, and I'm gonna pick a pawn. We'll also lose the dynamic from sound design, and finally, we'll combine grid-based movement and procedural walls and just create a simple Godot tile map, which leaves my last darling, and it hurts me, but I don't think we have the line budget to do quick turns or really turns it off. And it's gone. With that out of the way, let's see if we can speed run this project. Here we go. The easiest place for us to start is the map. Let's use the Godot tile map plus the tile art from Chess Survivors. I'll also add in some walls as well, but these won't actually have functionality. But real functionality is overrated, am I right? We can also quickly add our pawn enemies. Let's create a new node as a kinematic body 2D, add a pawn sprite, slap in a collision layer, and create our first script. Now we can't get rid of these extends statements, so the meta strategy is to use as few scripts as possible. For enemy movement, we'll go ahead and use a process function to move toward the current mouse position every frame by calling the move and collide built-in function from the kinematic body 2D. Cool, cool. And now you're probably saying, but Aramis, why on earth are you using the current mouse position? And that's a wonderful question, which leads me to my ultimate line hack. Are you ready? Instead of spending our precious few lines on character scripts and movement inputs, we are going to make the mouse the character by setting the mouse art to be our character's art. Eh? Eh? How about that five head idea? If that doesn't earn a like and subscription, I'm not sure what does. But is this too hacky? I don't know, let me know in the comments. Now this does have a few funny limitations like the sprite not scaling with screen size and there's no really way to animate the mouse art without using code. But I think those are some fair downsides in the name of saving lines of code. And just like that, we have an enemy and our character done in just two lines of code. Let's move on to the fun stuff, killing the enemies. We can accomplish this by adding a simple node 2D that we'll call Mr. Node. And Mr. Node's job will be to follow the mouse around and also handle collisions for our weapons. Speaking of weapons, let's add in the cribbage peg from Chess Survivors as an area 2D and then use the overpowered animation player to move it back and forth. This, this looks kind of bad, but, but we can fix it if we change the animation styles for the keyframes to ease in and out. This makes the animation more visually interesting. Finally, we need to connect the cribbage peg body entered signal to Mr. Node's script and tell the body to play its die animation, which is something we still need to set up. So let's flip back over to the pond where we can create an animation player, create the die animation, which turns it white, plays the on death sound, quickly scales up, shrinks down, and uses my favorite feature, calling the QFree method all in the animation node. Now that's a powerful mode. So we can kill the enemy and have a nice little weapon in only five lines of code, which leaves us with four before we blow past our budget. Deep breaths, Aramis. Deep breaths. 
We still can't lose the game, so let's hack that together quickly here. I think the best way to do this would be to check and see if the pawn's distance away from the mouse is greater than a threshold. Let's say something like 10 pixels. If it's greater than 10, great. We'll do the movement. Otherwise, we use a trick from the Play with Fusifers video and just reload the current scene. That puts us at seven lines of code and we still can't even spawn more enemies. So let's use a timer and on timeout, we can make Mr. Node spawn more pawns. And then we can have the pawn use its ready function to put itself within a random range of the mouse, AKA our character. While we're on the pawn node, we can also make them appear to walk by using another animation node to make them wobble back and forth by animating their rotation. Another improvement we can make is to turn off the processing and disable the collisions on death so the pawns stop moving as they die. Lastly, we can scale up the difficulty by reducing the timer's wait time over a long period using, you guessed it, yet another animation player which leaves us with five lines of code in the pawn script and four in the Mr. Node script for a grand total of nine lines, which as a math major, I can tell you is one less than 10. Honestly, I think the small version of Chess Survivors is kind of cute and surprisingly a fun game. This was an incredibly fun challenge and my brain grew and expanded in various ways. I also am gonna be taking this simple weapon design and implementing it into the full Chess Survivors game. I hope this demonstrated truly how powerful the animation player node actually is. A special thank you to all my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs. Go watch Play With First Rivers video. It's so cool to see how we actually came up with some different solutions, even though we both use so few lines of code. I've been Aramis. Have a B-E-A-U-tiful day.